government released the new jobs report for June. 80,000 new jobs created, 8.2% unemployment rate. I'm Jill Schlesinger from MoneyWatch.com. I'm joined by executive editor Jack Otter. Jack, what do you think of the report? Well, meh, I think was our answer. Uh, it's not good. It's just not good. It's a little better than last month. And amazingly to me, it was really close to what economists expected. Usually they're wildly off. They said 90. 84,000 was actually the private sector jobs, subtract 4,000 for government jobs. Uh, but the problem is it's just not pretty. You know, we had those great numbers at the beginning of the year in January and February, and then they really tanked. And we thought, well, maybe the warm weather had pulled the jobs forward, basically hiring at restaurants and so forth that, that you normally would have done in April, they did in February. Well, now it's June and we're still not seeing an improvement, so that excuse is starting to fade away. And, and I have trouble finding good news. All right, I get a little bit of good news. It looks like professional services keep seeing a little bit of an uptick. Temporary services up, so that's been pretty good. We've recovered about 80% of the jobs that we lost in professional services. Uh, from the worst part of the recession. And temporary services can be a really good sign because companies are scared to bring on a full-time person with benefits, but if they see a little lip uptick, they'll, they'll bring on a temp and then give them a full-time job and, if, if everything improves. And hopefully it converts into a full-time job. Some good growth in health care. That's been a pretty consistent performer. Manufacturing doing okay. I think the one area that's always been kind of scary to me is construction. That's usually been a leader as we come out of a recession. Housing grows, construction employment grows, grows. But since that was the epicenter of our financial crisis and we've lost two million construction jobs, it's kind of hard to see how that comes back anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, normally in a, in a recovery, 20 percent of the growth comes from the construction industry. Now it's actually a drag. And we built way too many houses. And frankly, we don't need to build them tomorrow. So I don't see those construction jobs coming right away. I, if you want to desperately seek a silver lining. I think you, you and I have talked about it. housing is probably bottoming. There's probably not too much farther to go. More families are being created. Eventually, yeah, people are going to need more houses. That will spur construction. And once construction really gets going, that could really help the economy. I just don't know when that's going to be. How do you see this playing into the global growth picture? Well, that's the other problem. You know, okay, if we're not going to find it within these shores, maybe the emerging markets can come to the rescue as they have in the past. But China is slowing. Brazil is slowing. I don't need to tell you about Europe. Obviously, that's a mess over there. In fact, corporate profits were down in the first quarter. You could attribute that entirely to a lack of exports. So uh, it, 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 I wish that, you know, I want to be the, the happy guy who's contrarian and say, okay, everyone's glum, but I'm going to say here's the good news. About the best thing I can say is maybe construction will pick up. And what about if things go better than expected? I mean, right now everybody is sort of dismal about where we are. But is there a case to be made that things could get better than people expect? Well, you know, again, I always love to be the contrarian. When everyone's happy, I say, well, here's the bad news. And last fall, when everyone was sad, I said, you know what? I think they might be expecting an even worse outcome than we're going to have. Briefly, I was correct. Uh, so now I'd love to go against the grain. One, you know, white horse might be the Federal Reserve. I don't think today's number was quite bad enough to actually bring in QE3, but we're probably a little closer. And you know what? If the Federal Reserve acts in, and it may not be at this meeting, the next meeting is July 31st and August 1st. If the Fed acts, just like we saw a lot of central bank action this week, we saw China, the European Central Bank, and the British Central Bank all acting. But if the Fed were to act, I think that could be a boost to the markets. It may not fundamentally change the economy, but it really could boost confidence. So I actually think that uh, the Fed's going to act sooner than later. I think they don't want to act too close toward, to the election. They'd rather do it before then. And I think they're no longer scared about inflation. They're worried more about deflation. All the commodities markets are down. So I'm going to give you the silver lining to end the interview, okay? I think that things are bad enough that the Fed's going to act. There, that's your silver lining. But keep watching here on CBS Money Watch. We'll be following the economy. We'll be following the Fed and the jobs market. Thank you so much for watching.